today. Got so much wood chopping done. Gonna have a nice long sleep after this. <sighs> Can't wait to just curl up in bed and get to sleep. <gasps> what was that? Uh, uh, it was it was probably nothing. Anyway, let's just try and get some sleep. <gasps> you may not rest now. There are monsters nearby. I suppose I better go and check it out. <gasps> so that's what they do when I'm asleep. Hello everyone, welcome back to Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX, here in Minecraft Beta 1.9, pre-release 5, and uh, we're almost at the end of exploring all of the changes and features added in this pre oh, ow, ow, ooh, uh, yeah, a bit of a crazy base. Um, we have almost finished going through all of the changes that were added in this version, with the exception of one, uh, I better move out of this particular space, oh, a creeper. Um, and, oh, there's all sorts of madness going on here. With the exception of one thing. The dragon has had some changes in this version. In fact, the dragon now has a death animation, the boss battles improved, and a few other things like that. But I've decided that I'm going to save the dragon battle until we reach release 1.0. But when we get there and we do slay the dragon, I'll go back and we'll check out all of these different changes that were added to the dragon and the end dimension in these last few pre-release versions. The question is, why do I have so many strange mobs falling down my ravine? And it's because I have opened... Oh, oh dear, that's bad. That's bad. This is bad. Very bad. <laughs> Uh, as I was saying, I thought it might be fun if I... Mm, I thought it might be fun if I just take out all of the... Wow! <laughs> if I just take out all of the torches, and that way all sorts of different mobs can spawn in here on these pads. And as they walk around, they'll occasionally just push each other off the edge. I've also opened up these little windows here so that if I feel like it, I can come down here and see exactly what's going on and encourage some of these mobs to walk towards me and go into the system here. So now creepers and all sorts of things are going to be going up to the top there and falling out of the hole into the void. But first, I think I'm going to have to do something about this. Better? Sort of? They shouldn't make their way over now. But this whole section of the base is looking really raggedy at the moment. It's just like a huge hole has been opened up into this section. So I'll come back and revisit that later on and make it look a little bit better. But for now, other than these changes with the dragon and the end, oh, look at that, lunch, there's nothing else to explore with pre-release 5, so I think it's time to upgrade to pre-release 6. Pre-release 6? This is the last pre-release in the beta 1.9 family of versions. We're getting really close to 1.0 now. And that means that the changes in these versions are going to be mostly about polishing the game and bug fixes and that sort of thing. But with every bug fixed, uh, sometimes there's one added. Hello? Uh, can I get into my house? Please? There were plenty of quality of life changes that were made with pre-release 6 now that we were getting closer to release, but... Ah... Uh, I'm not sure if I've got time to go through them all right now. I've got a meeting with a couple of sheep and I'm already running late. Psst. Pocket bug, what do you want? I'm running late. I'll do it for you. Do what? You know, going through all the changes and stuff, since you don't have the time to do it. Uh, I don't know. I won't even have time to edit it all together. Are you sure you can take care of all of that? Yes, of course. Leave it with me. I've been practising. Well, uh, okay, okay, I guess it's fine. Look, I've really got to go. Just get on with it and I'll be back a little bit later on. Right, hope that all goes okay. I better go and meet up with these sheep. All right. <coughs> well, Pocket Bug here to take you through some of the wonderful quality of life changes that were introduced in Beta 1.9, pre-release 6. In the visibility settings, you can now change the particle settings. Wow, just turn those down and now you should be able to use that dusty old Pentium without losing any frames. All sorts of blocks have had their mining time decreased. Check out how fast it was to mine that nether brick. This used to be so painful. You know what? We should try this out on some obsidian. Oh, come on, pre-release 5. 
You're so slow. This is unbearable. How could anyone put up with this? Seriously? It's gonna take you half an hour just to get enough obsidian for a nether portal. Ah, oh, I finally got there. Stair blocks now drop. Stair blocks. Wow. You can now go full amphibian and jump on top of lily pads. Look at that guy. Oh, but just don't try boating into them. Oh no. The tool efficiency got tweaked so that even if you use the wrong tool on a block, it will still break faster than using your fist. And finally, I need to bring you some sad news. The sun and the beautiful round moon we've had since pre-release 4 are now both square again. Pooh. That's about all the time we have to go through all of the changes in pre-release 6. I've been Pocketbug. Join me next time. Oh, I hope Pocketbug's getting on alright with that editing. It's a big job, but I'm starting to trust him. So just recently I was looking through one of my picture books and I found out something interesting about sheep in pre-release 6, and that is that if you have two sheep of the same colour and breed them up together, they will now produce baby sheep with a fleece the same colour as the parent. So I came out here to my two friends who decided to test this out for me. Now this should work with sheep of any colour, so I've decided to bring some lapis lazuli with me and dye up these two sheep to blue, and let's breed you two up and see what happens. Look at that! We got ourselves a little baby sheep and it's blue! So this is really good news if we want to do some wool farming. I've rounded up a few extra friends here for some more experiments because I want to be sure I understand these breeding mechanics properly before we even think about how to start possibly even farming sheep fleeces. First here I've got a couple of sheep that I wrangled from over the hill here and these are just two naturally coloured sheep, a black sheep and a white sheep that I found. And these are all white sheep and I've just recolored these two different colours. So let's pop into this pen here with these two sheep and uh, pl please take that stinky bum away from me. Let's just see what happens if we breed them up. and. What I want to try and understand is, is there a way you can predict how the baby sheep will appear? Will it appear white or will it appear black? And we might have to try this a few times. So let's start with this sheep on the left and you on the right. And what happens when you breed? We get a little white sheep. Now the question is, was that because I bred the white sheep first, followed by the black sheep, which made the white sheep the mum? I don't know. We're going to have to come back to this experiment. Oh, if, if you'll let me out, please, please let me out, please, please. Thank you. Let's try it with these two. These two are green and red. So let's see what happens if I breed red and green. We get green. It, it was the sheep. Green was the second sheep this time, but it was also the sheep on the left. The sheep on the left. Does my orientation have something to do with it? I don't know. We're going to have to do even more experiments. Look at this. I've just removed this baby sheep from the pen and look how distressed these parents are. They're like, no, come back. Come back. Don't get lost. I've never seen such dedicated sheep. Now that we've <clears throat> um, removed the baby, we should be able to repeat that experiment. But this time I'm facing in the other direction and I'm going to try again. First red, then green. Let's see what happens. Green, we got another baby. Where did it go? Oh no, we got a red. We got a red sheep. Hmm. I'm getting a little bit more industrial on my experiments here. I've set up these two little chambers. As you can see, we've got some mine track going into the soul sand blocks and the soul sand is slightly lower than other blocks, other solid blocks like this and like this. So that means that when the minecart goes in here, it should just sit snugly in this square like this and it should prevent it from moving. And I'm gonna capture these two, which I have released from the pens and try and get them into these little chambers so that we can do some controlled experiments on them. So come on sheep, come on. Now, what we need to do is get a minecart here. Now, hopefully you'll follow me. Now, hopefully you'll, no, uh, now, now hopefully, hopefully you'll, Follow me. What, what is it? What is it? Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we've got our first one here by complete fluke, no less. And in you go, nice and snugly into that little spot. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. Uh, I'm just going to put that back because 
Oh no, oh no, oh no, I can't put it back. There we go, okay. I just wanted to make sure there were no complications there. Now, I believe it's your turn. Your turn, follow me. Yes, yes, follow me. Follow me this way, please. Please. Why are animals in Minecraft the worst? They are literally the worst. Why you no follow? No! Follow. Wheat. Yes. Ah. Oh. Okay, somehow we managed to get it in there after a lot of effort. We finally got two sheep in these little slots here. If we face south, let's see what happens if we breed the two of them together. Now we need to wait one minute in between each of these experiments. Ah, oh, we got a little blue one, didn't No, a little red one. We got a little red one. Consistently so far, it's been the sheep on the left. So I'm going to remove this little lamb so it doesn't cause any problems. And then I'm going to try this again, but from a different direction. What you guys listening to sounds groovy. But are you ready to go again? Same experiment, but this time we're gonna go red and then blue. I wanna see if we get exactly the same results. Consistent results? Blue sheep. We got a blue sheep. Meh, meh. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm going a little bit sheep crazy out here. I've been out here breeding sheep for hours and uh, I haven't turned up too many positive results. So let me take you through a couple of things. Hi, first of all, I've been breeding these two here and you do get a chance of getting either a red sheep or a blue sheep when you breed two of these colors together. I tend to get more blue sheep than red sheep and I don't know why. And this blue sheep is always the pregnant one. But I've been doing the same thing over here and um, it's roughly similar results, really. This one seems to be always pregnant. Yes, exactly, there you go. And here, much, much the same. Not very much difference between all of these pairs. Let's see. You, yes, you're always the pregnant one. And again, you're always, oh, look, your baby ran away. Oh. And there's another weird thing as well. Uh, over here, I, I don't know what's going on here, but there's this green sheep here. This one here, see? Where are you? Where are you, green sheep? This green sheep. And this red sheep will not leave it alone. Ugh, that's gross. <laughs> um, basically, this red sheep just follows the green sheep wherever it goes, no matter what it does. And if you just keep your eye on them, you'll see that this one doesn't leave its side. It's almost like a mother-child kind of relationship going on. But these are two fully grown sheep. So, oh, that, that's just gross, red sheep. That's just gross. <laughs> Stop doing that. So I don't know what's going on with these two, but I'll, I'll keep my eye on it and see what happens. Over here as well, you can see I've been playing around with the idea of what some breeding pens might look like because it's really difficult to separate the lambs from the parents whenever you breed the sheep because I think that the lambs are the same size as the adults and that means that you can't put them through a more narrow space and get rid of them or anything like that and some setups like this don't seem to work out right here. I've got a fence gate which makes this really, really difficult to do otherwise you... Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is just this is just not good. You end up opening the ah no, you end up opening the gate by accident. Can I get you? No, no. So I don't like any of this. This this hasn't worked. Whereas this design over here that I started with, I've seen this on the internet, and it works by having the sheep inside of the minecarts, which means that they can't move. And this is actually a very clever design. Let me show you what's going on here. If I get a water bucket and a sign. We'll place the sign down here to prevent any kind of water spillage in between the two sheep here. But if I take this water bucket and uh, I need to get a couple of other blocks along the back here just to prevent any spillage and place water here. Uh oh, we have a leak. Ah, there we go. You'll see that the water flows from that central block down here into these two sheep positions here. Now, unfortunately, I just bred them, so I need to wait five minutes and then I'll show you exactly how it works. I've set this up now so we can see how it works in full. If we breed these two sheep, this one is always the pregnant one, so it should give birth to a little lamb, which should get caught up in this water here and then flow out this way. And because these two are trapped here forever in these minecarts on top of that soul sand, they will never move. So let's breed up you and you once more, and we should see you pop out a little lamb, there you go, a little red one, and it got flung all the way out here. 
So as you can see, this would be a perfect setup for a sheep farm, which would give me access to all sorts of sheep. I can then let them grow and then just harvest their wool because at the moment, sheep don't re-eat the grass to regrow their fleeces. So they're kind of one-time use only sheep, really. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. <laughs> One day that'll change, but not today. But unfortunately, this perfect farm has a fatal flaw. If I go out here, back into the game, whenever the world loads, the sheep all come out of their minecarts. Every single one of them that was in a minecart just pops out. And there's, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, I might have a play with this and see if there's a minecart free version. But as you've seen, every single attempt that I've made to have a minecart free sheep farm doesn't really work very well. So I'm really sad about this because I really wanted to build a really cool sheep farm. Here's our last ditch effort to see if we can get this farm working. I've had to replace this sheep here because uh, the last one escaped and hopefully you'll be the pregnant one. Uh, again, I'm not really sure how that works. But what I've done here is placed a glass pane here. So there's only a one high gap here and I'm not sure that's going to be enough to get the little lambling underneath and out into the system. In fact, you two, you can't even reach each other. No, this is just not working. No, I'm afraid it just doesn't work. I've readjusted it over here because this one is now the pregnant one. But as you can see, the little baby is still stuck in there. It just won't flow through because it's only one high. And if I break this block here, it'll be enough for this sheep, which is now loose, to flow through as well. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put this farm down for the day and revisit this in a future version. Well, I thought that if I'm not going to be able to create a sheep farm just yet, I might as well create a sheep sanctuary. So behind me here we have Rainbow Valley and down here we've transformed this area behind the ravine and you can see it's full of different sheep pens now and each pen has two sheep in there ready to be dyed and we're going to colour this place up like a rainbow and make it look beautiful and vibrant. Look at this place now. Doesn't it look great? So much more colorful. And now all I need to do is just wander around and breed up all of these sheep here, and I should have a limitless supply of wool. Now, as we know in this version, these sheep won't regrow their fleeces, so unfortunately I do have to breed them up in order to get access to their wool. And then once they've grown up, I can just... It's as easy as that. I hope you enjoyed exploring some of these sheep mechanics with me today. And if you enjoyed the episode, please feel free to let me know. If you'd like to support me further, you can click the links down in the description below. Join my Discord or support me on Patreon or just share the video. All of that helps my channel grow. To my wonderful Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Your continued support is just so amazing. For everyone else, I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye-bye. How did you get out?